All right, so now I'd call to order this meeting the Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, Cindy, looks like you're on Zoom. Uh, Cindy, will you do roll call? I think you're muted, Cindy. Cindy, if you can hear us, can you unmute your speaker? Maybe. Well, I, I, I guess I, I can do roll call. Uh, uh, Terry. Uh, Chris Jenkins. Present. Uh, I'm, I'm here. Mike Madone. Jim Nelson. Here. Uh, Cindy Nordell is, is here, but we, we can't hear her. Uh, Speechless. Ro Rochelle. OK. Um, <clears throat> Has everyone had a chance to read the minutes of last meeting? Yes. Um, if there aren't any corrections or omissions, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes from last meeting. I move we approve the minutes from last meeting. Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Um, we do roll call again. Uh, Chris? Yes. Jim Nelson? Yes. Uh, Cindy, if you can hear us. How, how many people do we need for a quorum? Four. Four? Yeah, we do need four for a quorum. Okay. I thought, yeah, I think it's the majority, isn't it? Could you message? A yay or nay vote, Cindy? I wonder if she could log out and log back in. <laughs> okay. See if that works.
<laughs> are, are you there, Cindy? She's still mute. Oh, it's video. That's mute. Can you hear us, Cindy? Cindy, you can vote via chat, too, if you want. Can you hear me now? Yes. Now we can hear you. <laughs> OK, I just switched to my phone off of my computer. Let me mute my computer here. Oh my gosh, this is a nightmare. OK, <laughs> I am voting to approve. Excellent. Uh, so we, we have uh, four ayes. Uh, the motion is passed. Um, so we're moving on to uh, the commission vacancy, and we have a letter from uh, Carol McNew. <clears throat> yeah, that's uh, Carol McNew's letter is the only one that we received. Um, I know she's, yeah, she's also um, joining us via Zoom as well. Um, her background, of course, uh, she's been... Uh, part of the Greenwood Pioneer Cemetery Committee. She's also been a part of the Fremont County Heritage Commission, um, the Fremont County Historical Society for a number of years as well. Um, so, and I know she's worked, uh, tried to work diligently on trying to get the Fremont County Heritage Commission to right. CLG. So um, she's, she has experience in, in uh, historic preservation and history, of course. Yeah, I, I think she's well, well qualified to be part of the, part of the uh, uh, commission. And I would, I would happily entertain a motion uh, for a nomination. I'll nominate Carol McNew be uh, added to the commission. I will second that. Uh, Cindy, do you want to do roll call? I think you're muted again. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, should I just go, should I go through the whole thing or do we know the people that aren't here? I don't have to go through those, Lisa? Um, it's better. It's, yeah, it's, uh, Chris is here, Mike. Yeah, okay, so uh, Chris? Yes. Okay, Mike? Yes. Jim? Yes. And I am a yes. Anyone uh, else I missed? Uh, that's, that's everybody here. Okay. Uh, so we have four yeses. Uh, the motion is passed. Uh, so next, uh, appointment of a new vice chair. Do we Jim, would you like to do that? Um, I think my orientation is a little more technical. I think uh, it'd be good to have somebody with a little deeper background in the past that's been here longer. So if you'd be willing, I'd nominate Chris. I don't know that I've been here longer. <laughs> <laughs> we, we bought our house in 2007 and restored it in 2009 and didn't move here until 2013 when we sold our house in Mesa, Arizona. But, uh, you know, I, my background's in geography and regional development. Uh, so we have a real interest in the community. But uh, again, I think it's a little more technical. It'd be good to have somebody that is more involved with uh, construction, I think, and, and has a deeper knowledge of uh, the past of uh, Canyon City. I, I think you'd be a great vice chair. I would not turn it down then. <laughs> great. So I'll nominate Chris. Uh, do we have a second? This is Cindy. I'll second it. All right. Uh, roll call. Chris? Yes. <laughs> Can you vote for yourself? I did. <laughs> <laughs> Good, okay. Mike? Yes. 
Jim? Yes. And Cindy is a yes. All right, we have uh, four yeses. Uh, the motion is passed. Uh, so on to the next item. Um, uh, we have a special meeting coming up for CLG orientation with the CLG project coordinator Thursday, March 11th at 4 p.m. Yes, um, we are been invited to join uh, Fort Morgan uh, and their or orientation uh, for their CLG as, uh, as well as uh, for us. Um, we will be having the meeting here um, and we'll just join their Zoom meeting in, in progress. Um, I don't believe it should take more than an hour, um, depending on questions, so. Nice. Uh, Saving Places Conference update and review. So we are required uh, for those of us who had um, registered to um, participate in the CLG conference uh, as part of a scholarship program that they provide through History Colorado um, to have the attendees um, report on their sessions that they attended. Uh, we have to uh, keep track of what sessions they attended as well as any um, <clears throat> overall impressions that they um, they got from attending those sessions. Um, it's basically a discussion. I know um, some of us on staff had attended as well as um, Jim and I believe um, Rochelle was the other one and was it Terry? I think was the other person as well. Um, Jim, if you want, I know you shared with me uh, via email um, some of the things that you had taken notes on. Yeah. Uh, do you would like to share with the, with the rest of the? <laughs> well, there were uh, a number of technical sessions. Uh, I was trying to get an idea what the direction of History Colorado was going to be. They've been working on updating their uh, uh, the State Historic Preservation Plan. Uh, there isn't a draft that's published yet, but uh, there really seems to be a strong emphasis uh, that's come out on uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, mm -hmm. and recognizing uh, Native American uh, tribes that uh, were in Colorado. Um, and it, it seems to be I, I would say, I don't know what your thought was from viewing it, but uh, just overwhelmed any other uh, aspect of historic preservation. Yeah, I, I, from what I uh, saw of the sessions that they were providing, that a lot of them were geared towards that. Um, I, uh, I found it fascinating, the first keynote uh, address that um, first day was on dollars and cents of development uh, yeah. patterns, which was a really neat, unique way of showing how um, downtown, historic downtown areas provide more um, in terms of tax revenue for a community than outlying areas, which would include Walmart or um, other box stores and they did that for several communities within Colorado and across the country and they did it by um, this unique three almost um, graphic of the town of showing what um, what areas of that air, um, downtown especially were providing the most in terms of tax revenue um, each city has a unique sort of course and trajectory trajectory um, and I think it'd be interesting to see how Canyon City would yeah. show up on that in terms of tax revenue and I'm, I'll we'll have to work on seeing if we could get that accomplished that was Joe Mancosi that yeah. did that presentation yeah it was I, I thought cool. it was really really compelling uh, mm -hmm. to look at the economic value of historic preservation and I dug out the uh, sales tax reports for Canyon City off the website, mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't see any kind of a breakdown. I'm, I'm hoping, I, and I know that we have to, you know, that the reports from individual businesses mm -hmm. are confidential, 
but I, I hope that we can get a, a breakout that shows downtown and other districts in terms of sales tax receipts so that we can track that as yeah. well as property value over time, changes mm -hmm. in property value so that we can you know, have a way of documenting and measuring the impact, the economic impact of downtown mm -hmm. um, on the economy and yeah. tax receipts. Yeah, I'll have to see if we can get that <laughs> yeah. somehow. Um, the other ones that um, I was, uh, I sat in on were um, Colorado Commercials Preservation Tax Credits 101. Um, there are some things that I had learned in uh, attending that, that session that I hadn't um, heard about before. Um, Fremont County, since our population is less than 50,000, we do qualify for um, the additional 10% for commercial properties in terms of tax credits, um, which I found interesting. I didn't know what the limit was, but it's 50,000 um, people per county. Um, also, a potential owner of a historic property that could be under a contract uh, could also be eligible for um, applying for tax credits of a commercial property. Um, the trick is the qualification or the, the cost of the project must exceed $20,000 to qualify for um, the rehabilitation project. Must exceed $20,000. Um, the tax credits do not apply for towards landscaping, paving, or additions to the building. They don't apply for appliances or furniture. Um, you could sell your tax credits and the rate for selling them you, is if you are qualifying or eligible for a million dollars uh, worth of tax credits, uh, you can sell the, that for the amount of $850,000. That's the rate. Um, but it does go towards capital gains uh, income on your taxes. So you have to make note of that um, on your taxes for that year. But that would mean if you're a nonprofit yeah. Uh, you can sell the yep. tax credit because you wouldn't need yeah. to use them. <clears throat> yep, exactly. You know, you, so you can either use yep. them and they can carry forward. Yeah. Uh, or if you're a nonprofit, you can you can sell exactly. Yeah. Or or if you don't have a huge tax liability and you don't mm -hmm. need that sort of, yeah. of yep. tax credit. Yep. Um, government owned properties can be leased to nonprofits or LLCs um, to have the nonprofit be eligible for the tax credits. And um, this, I'll have to do some double checking, but Airbnbs are technically classified as residential and not commercial in terms of tax credits, but it depends on the zoning. So it uh, depends on where it is. And, and it makes sense, but I, I guess I never uh, knew this. Um, if a property is listed on the National Registry of Historic Places, it's automatically on the state registry. So they don't have to apply for state um, application. They're automatically on it. Hmm. Um, yeah, those, those couple things I, make sense, but I didn't know. <laughs> so is that a graduated rate when you say a million dollars and you, so it's an 85% essentially of what your tax credit is it, you don't have to have a million dollars in improvement i believe so yeah yep. so twenty thousand you would mm -hmm. yeah and it's a market Still, function it's not yeah. a regulatory thing i'm it, sorry it, it's the market for the the credit it's not a it's not set in law it's just what the the market is gotcha so it could be more or less more depending or less. on yeah. what someone wants yeah. to pay yep um uh, and in fact they had one example where uh, the uh, organization that had the tax credit had brought a buyer to the table, and so they got a little higher rate uh, because the the outfit that sold the uh, tax credit didn't have to go out and hunt for a buyer. There's a few other ones that I attended 
um, as well. Um, how to date mid-century buildings. Um, we're getting more and more towards that. Uh, those neighborhoods are now becoming historic. Uh, mid-century modern, um, California contemporary style, and of course, ranch um, style of architecture. Um, what makes them unique um, and their characteristics as well. Um, going forward, when we do surveys, we might want to look at those areas of Canyon City that are what we probably consider more modern, but technically they're historic. So. There was also a great presentation by Dr. Dwayne Vandenbush of uh, Western Colorado University, I think it was, so that talked about mining towns, and he really captured a lot. Uh, I thought it was uh, very well presented. And you can go back and look at that. I, I don't know if everybody can go or just registered attendees. Um, I th yeah, I think it's just registered in, um, attendees, but if I think there might be a way around it. <laughs> um, I'm planning on reviewing some of the ones that I registered for, but I couldn't, time-wise, I couldn't, um, couldn't do it. Um, sitting in with me as I watch them, that might be possible. It was a very informative presentation and, and then he was chastised afterwards for not appropriately recognizing the damage that mining can do and that it displaced native people mm -hmm. uh, and apologized and they sent out a note to the attendees saying, mm -hmm. you know, um, this was an omission. And, you know, I mean, it wasn't like he was glorifying mining or anything. It was just a, uh, mm. yeah. so. Was there, did you, no. okay. No. <laughs> we can, um, for the ones, the other ones that had attended um, the next meeting um, that they're here, we can ask them the same question. I will have to send in a report um, by June 1st. Okay. To be re reimbursed for the scholarship. And I, I was registered independently. I, I wasn't able to oh, okay. watch any of them live, but I'm, I'm hoping that I can go back yeah, yeah. You can. On, on my own time and, yep. and check them out. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. One thing I was trying to determine because of this emphasis on diversity and inclusion uh, what we might need to do to deal with History Colorado in terms of grants or activity with them once the historic preservation plan is updated. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm thinking that uh, we can certainly be inclusive in terms of how we approach the community. So I think we can, we can make a definite point of emphasizing uh, inclusiveness. Mm -hmm. Um, I think as we begin to look at uh, racial and ethnic diversity in the community, uh, we're going to need to come up with some numbers that we can use as a reliable data set. Uh, we'll probably want to net out the uh, population of uh, the territorial correctional facility uh, so that that doesn't skew the numbers. Uh, but once we get a, a number available, then we can, you know, try to ensure that uh, we have the diversity reflected in what we do that, you know, as, as is present in the community. Um, and I'm also thinking as we look into uh, the background on some of the homes and, and businesses here to be able to document uh, minority participation and historically, because that, that seems to be one of the, the things that they were looking at is that uh, in some community and you know this the, the, I think they began working on this and then you had the COVID-19 thing you had the Black Lives Matter demonstrations so I think it really heightened the awareness of uh, these topics uh, sustainability and, and diversity uh, so that's you know part of what you get when you have a Denver centric uh, state agency I guess uh, but the uh, I, I think it is wise for us to be prepared for how we uh, how we address this mm -hmm. 
I only have one other announcement. Um, we, there, I just got an email um, regarding uh, upcoming educational webinars for CLGs. Um, you can register for them uh, through the CL, CLG portal. And there's one coming up, uh, I believe, on, let me find it, uh, March 10th uh, on design review critique. Um, the one that they had initially planned for the 17th um, has been canceled. Uh, but the one in April on preservation law is still available as well as preservation advocacy on May 19th. And I can email all these dates out um, to the rest of the commission. But you can also get them, uh, a list of these through the CLG training portal that you should all have access to. I, one question, as yeah. long as we're on announcements. Um, and that's the comprehensive plan update. Uh, I know that we've had some input into that already, mm -hmm. but I'm kind of curious about the status and if there are future opportunities for us to interact with uh, the planning consultant. Is it on, it's, it's on the city's? Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a joint planning commission city council meeting tonight that will be public and Zoom. Um, if this is the second meeting that the joint committees had to discuss the comprehensive plan. This is really more the land use side of things. There will still be more in terms of the zoning regulations and, and all of the other updates that are going to happen with it down the road. So there's going to be more public meetings. Um, wouldn't hurt to maybe talk to Patrick about being a little closer to it, I guess you could say. I noticed on their list of historic buildings, they didn't have some of the buildings that the uh, Heritage Commission has designated, oh, like right. the county had. Well, had that'd probably building. be helpful to get them. Yeah. Yeah. And, we, you know, we can, we can, I can get it to either Patrick Mulready or we can, I can email the consultants themselves, but I'll probably rather go through Patrick for that sure. since he's managing the contract. But I think they'd want to see that, certainly. And there, there will hey, be Chris, this is meeting. Cindy. I'm sorry. You said there was a combined meeting of the City Council and what group tonight? City Council and Planning Commission at 6, okay, six o'clock tonight. And it, it'll be on Facebook Live. Um, I think the majority of the attendees will be Zooming, but uh, there should be people here as well. I'm not quite certain. Cool. Thank you. Right. How do, do we have... get that invitation to Zoom? What was that, Carol? How do we get an invitation to Zoom in on that meeting? It, it should be Facebook Live as well. Yeah, yeah you'd want to do Facebook Live unless you want to ad address it, but there's no, it's really a discussion. So there's not really a public hearing, it's just more of a discussion. But um, so, okay. yeah, Facebook Live is where you'd want to watch it. Thank you. Sure. Do we have any other announcements or public comments? Well, our, our, our next meeting will be that special meeting, March 11th um, at 4 p.m. Uh, and our next regular meeting, March 24th, also at 4 p.m. And if there are no further announcements or public comments, this meeting is now adjourned.